Hey guys, Rivers here, and I've got some cool tech I want to show you today. We're going to take a look at the Minix Neo X8H Android Media Player. Minix also released a new air mouse remote control called the M1, so we'll take a look at that as well. I'll be giving away this X8H later in the video too, so stay tuned with some cool tech. Aw oh, yeah! Welcome to my full review of the Minix Neo X8H Android Media Player. First, let's take a quick look at what comes in the box. So it comes with an infrared remote control, manuals, HDMI cable, USB cables, and a quality 5 volt 3 amp power supply. I also have the M1 Air Mouse Remote Control. Right now you can get this mouse with the X8 as a promotion, but normally it's sold separately. This remote is really nice because it has an air mouse function, plus it has all the Android function buttons, and it uses RF so you don't need to point it at the X8 to make it work. Probably the best thing about the M1 though is the range. I've tested it from about 30 feet away and it works great. You can see here I'm using the mouse from the other room. The M1 also includes a built-in rechargeable battery which can be recharged via micro USB cable. You can see the port here next to the on off switch. Plus it comes with a wireless USB adapter so you can use it with other Android mini PCs you might have as well as Windows, Mac, Linux and more. Here you can see it's super responsive in Windows. Anyways, I'll add a link to the M1 in the description down below. Now let's take a closer look at the X8H Android Media Player. So inside it's got a new AM Logic processor, the S802H. The H means this processor has support for Dolby Digital playback. This is an A9 based processor, but it's much faster than the Rockchip 3188 that we've seen so many times before. It works especially well for HD video playback. It's also got a new graphics processor, which is eight cores instead of four. It's a huge improvement because it now just rips through HD video and even 4K video. It also comes with Android 4.42 KitKat and it's got a dual band Wi-Fi chip and antenna that work really well to get good reception. On the outside, the X8 is very similar to the X7. It's got the same ports, same buttons, and basically the same overall design. The bottom is different on the X8 though. It's got these nice rubber feet now so it can keep it from sliding around when cables pull on it. Let's quickly go over the ports on the X8. So you've got your recovery mode button, HDMI port, optical audio out, two USB 2.0 ports, ethernet port, and your power plug. On the side, you've got a power button, which is actually really nice to have on these media players. You've got headphone jack, microphone jack, another USB 2.0 port, full-size SD card slot, and your OTG port. I tested the SD card slot with my 128 gig SD card, and it worked great. This is a new ultra high speed class 3 card too, so now we know that UHS 3 cards will work on here. I'm happy because I can transfer movies on this card much faster than I could before. I can get about 60 of my favorite 1080p MKVs on this card, so I barely need an external hard drive. Plus I can use the card for recording 4K video on a camera too. Now let's go through the setup. You're going to plug in your HDMI cable, your SD card, your M1 remote wireless USB adapter, and the power. I've got everything hooked up to a 4K TV so we can test out the highest resolution video on the device. My TV is the LG UB8500, which is actually an amazing TV, but this Android Media Player will make it even better. So this is what you'll see the first time you start up the HX8. You can choose either the standard Android launcher or you can choose Minix's custom UI, which is called Metro UI. We'll look at that in a second. But first, here you can look around. You can drag down and get some of your notifications up top. On the other side, you can go to some of your frequently used settings like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or just the settings menu. Let's take a quick look at some of the display settings on here, and then I'll show you how I customized it out. So under display, if you leave this guy at uh, on, then it will just default to 720p but turn it off and you can go to 1080p or all the way up to 4K resolution in different refresh rates depending on what you want to have on your TV. Now let me show you my favorite way to configure an Android media player. I installed Next Launcher 3D plus a theme called Project Hera by Bionic Themes. The theme costs a couple bucks but you get hundreds of icons that look awesome. This way all your icons match. I did this to celebrate the release of the LG G3 because I think the icons look kind of like the G3's icons. Anyway, I'll add links to all the software I use in the description down below. The camera app on the X8 works really good. I've got the Logitech C525 and I have no problems at all. Nice and smooth video. Now let's get back to that custom launcher I talked about earlier, the Metro UI. This is made so that you can toggle around and go everywhere you need to go by just moving up, down, left, right, and select. 
It works with the M1 remote and also the included IR remote. It's great for apps like Plex or XBMC where you use very minimal mouse navigation. It's also totally customizable so you can add your most frequently used apps down here at the bottom or you can add groups of apps where you've got like media playback, web browsing. Each of these is like a folder where you can put multiple apps inside of. And that brings me to XBMC. Minix has made the first 4K version of XBMC for Android that I know of and it works great on here. This is based on XBMC 13.1 Project Gotham and it works really well on here. And so this is XBMC playing 4K video. I shot this myself and uh, it's nice and smooth. It might bump once or twice when you very first start out, but after that it's just nice and smooth. You can see the menus coming up above it don't seem to affect the video playback, which is actually new to me. A lot of the Android media players, when you play, uh, the menus start slowing it way down. Also, I get a lot more playback of audio on camcorder footage and camera phone footage than I did before, and that's probably thanks to the XPMC and also the H version of the S802. This is some 1080p video, and you can see it just plays nice and smooth, as smooth as the original anyways. Also, I tested this on some Blu-ray ISOs. Basically, I took a Blu-ray I own, ripped it to my hard drive so it looks like an image of the disc, and it played flawlessly on there too. You could see the menus and the video quality just looked awesome. So ISOs play no problem as well, which is surprising. Here's a quick test with 4K versus 2K. So I've got my new set here and I'm also using my old 1080p set to compare them. So I've got the camera about two feet away on both of them and you can definitely see some artifacting on the 1080p and also the pixels, you can make those out much better also. I tried to do both videos on the 4K set, but I, when I switched it down to 1080p, it still looked damn good. So I don't know if it was upscaling or if maybe it's actually still outputting at 4K because the video is 4K, but I couldn't see any artifacts on that set. But when you get up close like this, you can definitely see the difference. The 1080p just doesn't look near as good. Still looks really good from far away, but close up, you can really see the difference. Anyways, this was just a rough test. The camera's not really good at capturing television pixels. You get this rainbow effect all the time. So just a rough test to give you an idea of what we're looking at. Now I'm going to run a couple quick benchmarks on here. So first we'll take a look at CPU-Z just so we can see how the processor operates. One thing I notice is it seems to run much more efficiently. Like a lot of times you'll see several of the cores stopped and just one will be working. Also, I've seen it go up to 2 gigahertz, and I haven't seen a lot of the older CPUs do that. Next up, I ran Linpack just to get a quick CPU benchmark, and it's getting about 200 to 250, so running roughly double of what the older version of Android mini PCs were getting. And finally, I ran Antutu just to get a total system benchmark, and I got a really solid 23,990, which is probably one of the best I've ever seen on an Android mini PC. One thing I noticed is when I ran it in 4K mode, Antutu came out almost exactly a thousand points lower. So 4K does slow it down just a little bit, but it's still really usable and better than other 4K players I've tried. And finally, I wanted to take a look at some screen mirroring on the X8. So I've got my iPad Air here and it's working through the AirPin software. Works pretty well, it's a bit laggy and the output is definitely not 1080p, but it does get the job done. To mirror using Android, I used the built-in MirrorCast app instead of the AirPin software like I used for the iPad. The X8 mirrors a little bit better with Android, and my LG G-Pad 8.3 actually mirrors really well. There was a few artifacts when changing screens sometimes, but overall the experience is nice and fast. Minix does a good job of covering the little things, like how they have a faint blue light on here instead of a bright blue light like on the Vega. I know I can just cover the light up with tape, but it's nice that Minix pays attention to details. That just about wraps up my review from the Minix Neo X8H Android Media Player. It's been a very solid player. I haven't had it lock up or auto reboot a single time while making this review. I've had very few glitches and the performance has been really good. I'll put a complete list of the pros and cons in the video description down below. Actually, there is one more thing before I go. I want to give away the X8 in a contest. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber to some cool tech on YouTube and add a comment down below. In your comment, just tell me what gadget you are most looking forward to by the end of 2014. I'll announce the winner on Facebook, so you might want to follow me on there too to see the announcement. I'll choose the winner as soon as I hit 30,000 subscribers. A big thanks to Minix for providing this awesome player for the contest. Contest rules will be in the description down below, as well as links to all the hardware and software you saw in the video. Thanks again for watching, and as always, aloha.